Hello there, welcome to another podcast from EnglishBanana.com My name is Matt Perlant, I'm a teacher and writer and I'm with EnglishBanana.com uh, It's been a long time since our last podcast, so I'm sorry about the, the wait, but we're back and in this podcast I'm going to be giving some teacher tips and uh, we're looking at teaching English using you are the course book method and if you want to know more about that you can find find uh, the books on our website englishbanana.com go to the free books scroll down the page and you'll find a link for you are the course book lesson plans book if you know this method then you, you'll know more what I'm talking about today but uh, I want to give some ideas for mode 1, mode 2 and mode 3 lessons and if you do the lessons it would be great to hear from you how you got on, what what happened so this podcast is really aimed at teachers today but if you're a student of English I hope you, you will get uh, something from it as well uh, for mode 1 this week maybe try, uh, try mode 1 lesson with the topic of winter so the students have to write on think about to write on the board eight words connected with winter and uh, in mode one students make a group text to gather on the board and the text type could be poem this time so if you do this lesson please send me your winter poem and uh, we can look at it in the next podcast maybe mode two in mode two we're using uh, a real text i found a great text this week from telegraph newspaper online telegraph.co.uk and the text is called city of the future sinks into the ocean and it's really uh, intriguing title if you type it into search engine you'll find it telegraph.co.uk um, city of the future sinks into the ocean I'll be putting the links for these things onto the uh, YouTube page onto our YouTube page so you can find it there this is a in really interesting article about um, living underwater and you can use this text at different levels of course if you've got uh, whether you've got beginner, elementary, pre-intermediate, intermediate, advanced, whatever. Um, if you've got, for example, elementary, you might want to simplify the text, make it, uh, cut it down to the bare bones of the story, which is that people uh, in Japan might be living underwater, under the ocean, in spiral-shaped uh, accommodation, which is really looks really interesting, it's an amazing picture and uh, something that could grab your students and you can find some interesting language here um, in the text for example with try land at a premium but at a premium, what does it mean at a premium uh, we've got words like incorporating, predicting uh, beneath the dome some nice words and phrases. Uh, blue sky thinking, quite a common phrase these days. So, some nice language here. If you've got intermediate and above, then you could use the text as it is. And this leads on to some interesting projects after you've analysed the text. You know, thinking about city of the future. What does it mean? Uh, what could it mean? For you, you know, of course it's great to think about uh, future, like sci-fi things. And there's also a gallery, picture gallery with this story, which has got some really beautiful pictures. And it could be from a film, for example. Um, let's have a look at mode 3, maybe try a uh, topic of transport. We we'll talk a lot uh, from Talk A Lot Elementary Book 1 using the the 40 words about transport 
And I would really encourage you to try uh, using your other course book method. The modes one, two, and three really great for students. They really get get them working. Get the students to do the work in your lessons. Don't uh, wear yourself out. Let the students practice because that's what they're there for, isn't it? Really, at the end of the day. Um, this week in the podcast, I want to have a, a talking point. Um, a few things happened in the news this week that have uh, been in the news in the UK. We could talk about, um, for example, UKIP gaining another MP. It's something that's very interesting in, in British politics, something which which I haven't seen in my lifetime. Another party uh, gaining prominence, breaking the, the two-party system, which is quite fascinating to watch. Something in the entertainment media, um, the story about Band Aid 30 is, is really continuing and there's a lot of controversy about it. It could be good for a discussion in your class. Uh, you, of course you can play the song, you can play the video. Um, Band Aid have released, four, this is the fourth version of Do They Know It's Christmas. What are the good points about it? Is it a good idea? Was it a good idea? A lot of people uh, saying that it wasn't. So, what do you think? What do your students think? Of course, it's helping to raise awareness about the Ebola crisis in West Africa. It's helping to raise money. Maybe won't be enough money. What do you think? A lot of controversy uh, and a lot of people are against this idea. For example, they say, not again, you know, it's the fourth time, it's the same song. There's a problem with the lyrics, a lot of people are against, uh, feel they are patronizing, they're creating a bad impression about Africa, the, the continent of Africa, which is a rich, diverse continent, of course. What about the, the artists involved, you know, a lot of very rich people, some of them with hundreds, hundreds of millions of pounds in the bank, asking us to give money. It's a, it's a huge uh, sort of oxymoron, isn't it? Something to discuss. What, how, do you, how do you feel? How do young students feel, you know, if you've got teenage groups? Um, what do they think about it? When I, for example, when I was a young fella, um, we had the first Band-Aid record, 1984, was amazing. It was something absolutely incredible. We'd never seen it before. This kind of all the pop stars coming together. It was just unbelievable in terms of the zeitgeist. It just hit hit the media like like a brick. You know, we'd never seen this. It was amazing, and for me, it's still the best version, of course. But how do people feel? You know, young people feel about it these days. Or giving to charity opens up into a wider discussion about giving to charity. Um, the organizer of, the, of this record has been rude to people who disagreed with it, who didn't want to take part. Is that the right way to behave? Um, is it better to do this than do nothing? But, but were people doing nothing? Were people giving? Um, now the organizer's telling us, to delete, if you've downloaded it, delete it and, and then download it again. But of course you can't do that unless you have uh, different accounts in iTunes or whatever. So this show, maybe this shows a bit of uh, um, ignorance about the, about the popular culture these days. We can't do it. If we delete it and download it again, we don't pay for it again. Yeah, it's part of the... Uh, the safeguard for digital medias. So, so, a lot of things to discuss there about Band Aid 30. Um, I found a good comment online in the in the Guardian newspaper. Uh, let's find it. You no, know, well written comments can be useful in your lessons. You could, you could find some which are pro and some which are against and. Uh, get them, the students to, to discuss the language and look at the points that are raised there. Um, 
this one here from a, a person called Charles C. U. and uh, on the Guardian page from 24th of November and he says I disagree with your point uh, I'm rather in the Adele school of thought on this give band-aid 30 a wide berth so some great language you know the something school of thought give something a wide berth this is all in the same sentence. A lot of nice idioms and uh, real language to discuss. So go to the comment sections in the online papers and uh, we can use this language, real language, in the lessons. Um, so let's move on now in the podcast to some English banana news. This week I've been uh, I started an online course for teacher training for some Russian teachers and they've been very nice. We had the first lesson last Wednesday and we were discussing, we're using your other course book method, I'm talking about that uh, in, the, in the course. And I asked them about using the books, the course book, how do they feel about using the course book? And it was interesting because there weren't many positive comments about it. And if you follow my podcast, you know that I don't like using the course book. There's so much rich material out there which is free to access. We don't need it. And it was interesting these teachers in Russia agreed with me and gave a lot of reasons why they wanted something different. Uh, and that's why they were... They wanted this course, in fact. And part of it, of course, is the price of the books and materials. Uh, what else? This week I've been teaching English to two-year-olds in a nursery school near, near my home, which has been quite fascinating, really. If you have any tips for teaching English to two-year-olds, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, it would be good. I'm a bit of a beginner in this area. Uh, when they can't read, when they can't write, when they, the, their knowledge of English is, is minimal, then what can you do in the lesson? What do you do with, with them, two-year-olds? Of course, songs, uh, flashcards. But if you have any tips, please send, send me a, drop me an email or from the EnglishBanana.com site and uh, I'll maybe share them in the next podcast because it's fun to teach two-year-olds. You never know what's going to happen. But what can we do? What does the lesson plan look like? Uh, other news. Uh, recently we launched the mobile site for EnglishBanana.com. You simply type in the browser m.EnglishBanana.com and everything there is optimized and perfect for mobile users. So if, you've, if you're using a tablet or mobile phone, and uh, you want to find all our worksheets and books and so on, then it's all there and it should be a nice experience compared to using the, the desktop version on mobile. So that's something new. Also you can play games on the mobile site where you couldn't, you couldn't before on tablets and things. So that's something we've been building. I'd love to know your feedback. Also this week I'm plugging uh, our books on Amazon, amazon.com and .co.uk. We've got Big Grammar Book, Big Grammar Book 2, Talk A Lot Books 1 and 2 and 3. And they're available on all the Amazon sites. So nice paperback books. What's the difference between having a paperback book and uh, a load of printouts? Well, it's, it's much lighter to have a, book, a paperback book, for example, a big grammar book. Stick it in your pocket, read it on the bus, read it on the train. And of course you have to pay for that, but uh, and the download is free, but when you're printing out, you've still got to pay for your paper and ink, haven't you? So uh, our books are very, very reasonably priced, only uh, about five or six pounds for the... For the uh, for these books. So have a look on Amazon uk or .com or any Amazon site. Um, also I'm hoping to do in the next podcast to focus on uh, Twitter resources. If you've got a Twitter account where you're 
pr providing links or you're providing your own resources for English teachers, then please send, send me some info or uh, send me a, a tweet on Twitter at, uh, at English Banana. And, uh, you know, I, conf I might uh, put it into the next podcast. So that's really all for today. We've looked at some uh, ideas for mode one, two, and three lessons. We've looked at a talking point. It was about band aid 30. And some other news from English Banana. So um, if you have any, uh, uh, any questions about English Banana or about this podcast, please let me know. Go to our website and find the contact page. Click on it. Or you can email info at englishbanana.com. So thanks for listening today and see you next time.